Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, so we did just finish the testing on some Epon irons, and we've got another Japanese brand, relatively new brand that I personally hadn't heard of. You really no, hadn't. I, I had not. Um, Lydia Co currently has them in the bag. It's the Proto C forged iron. Yeah. Um, this is the CO1 model. They also have the CO3, three, three. five, and seven. Right. So um, this is obviously the more of the cat or a blade version. Mm -hmm. um, Never heard of them before, but they, they do look pretty good. They really do, yeah. I mean, I think when Lydia put them in the bag, when she became a free agent, you know, kind of post PXG, obviously you go into the marketplace and, and you kind of play what you like, really, at that point. And, you know, I think people stood up when, when she played them. But they, when you dive into it a little bit more, they are played by quite a lot of players, especially on the LPGA Tour. And it's, it's maybe more of the, um, you know, the Asian-based players uh, that, that are into them. And... Like we're seeing a bit of a trend right now, obviously the popularity of brands like Mura and, and Epon. Um, Proto C obviously f see a little gap in the market or a little niche to come into the North American market with some of the best looking irons you know, out there. Yeah, super clean looking. Like that's my initial thought with them. They look like a tr traditional blade wood. Yeah. Um, they're saying they have some new technology in this. Um, it's actually a multi um, material blade. So mm -hmm. they've actually stuck a titanium rod through the middle of the, uh, the actual iron itself. I don't think I've heard of that before. No, 25 gram titanium rod. So it's, it's, a, it's a blade that they're saying is a little bit more forgiving than other blades because yeah. of this, uh, this little bit of weighting. Yeah, and it, it, we've seen companies use titanium in the past. If we think of Mizuno with MP59, they had ti a titanium sort of, you know, medallion at the back. Uh, obviously, titanium being a lighter, stronger material than the steel around it, so that spreads the mass to the toe and the heel, making it higher MOI. So similar thing, right? So the, the titanium being placed right in the middle here, slice that open, you would literally see, as probably you'll see in the images, there's, there's the titanium block right in there. So that's spreading the mass. So that's why they can claim that a blade plays like a cavity back. Right. right? The, for, this, this has all the look of the, the iron connoisseur, but it plays like... Uh, uh, oversized model. Yeah, and I know when I first saw the iron, we were both looking at it, we both would never have guessed that there was some type of technology no. to, to make this different than any other blade on the market. So Completely um, encased. Normally you see some weld lines or you'll see something that kind of makes you think that there's something in there. This, you literally think this is just a you know, forged, banged, compressed uh, iron like a, like a Mura. Yeah, and it, again, it's a Enzo forged in Japan again, yeah. so it's it should feel very similar to the Epon iron and the other irons that we've Which we tried loved. from that. Yeah, exactly. So um, let's get you hitting the pitching wedge here. Okay. Well, again, we'll see, uh, run through the test here, see if there's anything that stands out, anything that's different than maybe you're used to. Yeah, interesting. I mean, again, talk about the components that they sent as Elite Grips out of Japan. Haven't heard of them. First time yeah. trying them. A little bit different. Kind of stickier, very kind of Japanese, you know. They remind me a bit like the number one texture on the grips that I use, but a little bit more of a smooth kind of uh, texture to the grip. Uh, Nippon Modus 120TX, so the, the big boy version, yeah. 126 grams, uh, pretty stiff. It is interesting that that side of the world chooses to go more of that rubber feel grip. Like, Definitely. They, they're big with the, that, you don't see it a ton here. You see a lot no. of people going for more of a cord or, or something that's got um, more tackiness in the sense that it's got like a cord tacky yeah. instead of a rubber tacky. Totally, and then even even you know on the, on the tour, it's still tour velvet, still yeah, yeah. so many tour velvets Basic. or, or t uh, the core BCT version. Um, so that is cool. All right, what we got? Wedge at one forty. Standard loft at forty five. Yeah, forty five degrees. A little uh, bit loft flatter it. on the on the lies. What are they at sixty three? Uh, we're at sixty three is yeah. the stock on the so, pitching wedge. Yep. You know, always remember, guys, that that's when you get some clubs from one of the Japanese manufacturers. Typically, they will be a little on the flatter side. That's North American standard 64. Some companies even go slightly more up than that, but if you get a set from Japan, they typically are quite flat. Flat. Okay, they're not too bad. Maybe a, maybe a groove low. Yeah, so maybe a fraction thin. That's yep. what I was gonna, from sound. Good miss though. Better. Yeah, it's not flushed. Okay. 
Initial feel, sound? Quite solid. Okay. Quite consistent. Um, yeah, like I feel like efficiency for me, if we look at club data, maybe down a little bit. I kind of one, two, two, one, two, three. Normally on, on that, I feel like I might be down a hair on efficiency. Um, yeah, not, not bad, not bad. I mean, again, standard deviations. If you're, if you're looking for consistency and the type of player who will play this will be looking for consistency, yeah. it's right there. Yeah, yeah. Standard deviation on the carry, excellent. Peak height, excellent. Spin rate is very good. Ball speed and launch. If I'm a fitter and I'm watching someone else, I'm going, what more do you want? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, even that one that you said you caught a little thin, uh, it definitely sounded different than the next two that mm -hmm. you hit. You still got a decent amount out of it. It wasn't, it didn't strike me as yeah. a, a terrible shot by any means. You still got the carry out of it. You still, it didn't see a ton of uh, kind of drop in anything other than the ball speed being a little yeah. off. Which was offset by the low spin, so it actually ended up carrying yeah. the same distance. No, quite good. Yeah, awesome. Quite Let's get good. You into the seven iron here. Okay, initial look at the uh, the seven there. Yeah, I like Top it. Top line, pretty good. I know Close. you're pretty big on the uh, the offset look. Yeah. Uh, pretty comfortable there. This is fine. This yeah. is this is minimal for sure, and yeah, quite you know probably quite tall relative to some blades that are out there uh, head size, but it doesn't doesn't offend me at all. Yeah, so just counting the scoring lines. 13 scoring lines, very standard uh, in terms of the, the look of it. Some companies, if they're looking for a little bit more friction, might go 15 scoring right. lines. Most people don't go less than 13, so very, very standard. Is that the old Tiger Nike irons? They were... They had tons, tons of grooves on there, thinking. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just, okay. you know, we go back to the purpose of a groove. It's more, more kind of little kind of more space for, for matter to disperse if you've got water, grass, dirt, right. whatever it Makes might sense. be. 32 degrees of loft on the, uh, the seven iron, okay. um, 61 and a half lie angle on the stock. Definitely the wedge didn't feel by any means, yeah, not that it should, but definitely didn't feel jumpy, so not expecting these to be super hot. Sounded really good. That was nice, yeah. Yeah, that, that sounded was... flushed. At 175 on the fly, that was that was good. Yeah, that was pretty spot on there. Pretty much similar. Same as the last one. Pretty similar. Yeah, lovely. No, they felt excellent. The seven feels better than the wedge. Okay. Lovely. They sound good. I like them. Yeah. I think it should maybe just. Just go with some Japanese irons. What do you think? Epons were good. I mean, I know the 14s are fours in Japan. Maybe yeah. A little I mean, if any of those uh, Japanese tinker. brands are listening, feel free to make some in Lefty. That yes. Would be, uh, I get We need the more shaft. Lefty love. Yeah, it's brutal. Let's, yeah. Uh, let's give the four iron. Okay. Or five, sorry. There's actually nothing available in four until you get into their most game improvement mm. iron, as well as they have a CO 1.5 which is available in a three and four. It looks like almost like a driving iron yeah. style hollow body head. But I'm looking at this and that it looks pretty good. It, it doesn't have really a ton good. of offset. It looks like something that you could maybe put in the bag if you if you were looking for a full set of these. Yeah. Maybe it could be a good top of the bag option. Absolutely. No, these these look these look nice to five and then yeah, maybe not continuing down the, the line of you know thin top line and, and going into that is it's maybe just what their sales data shows them. Most people maybe don't buy four, four irons from them and, and that's a type of iron that, that they'll sell to more of their, their consumers. So uh, yeah, if, I, I would love to try them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think if, uh, if you're Proto, watching, if send, Proto send a couple this way, yeah. Yeah, we'd love to try them and, and blend them, you know, and talk about how you blend them because if, if it has a different uh, manufacturing DNA, then you want to probably loft them appropriately for the gapping. Yeah, so we said we said that uh, five irons at twenty five degrees of loft. Yeah. Yeah. So the four iron in the CO one and a half is actually twenty two and a half. Okay. So it's a little weaker. A little weaker, um, yeah. Two and a half to match probably how much hot the face is. So That's... they've kind of they, it's clearly they've done it in a strategic way for this good exact for reason. So good, good for them. It's really good there. Yeah. Really good spine. 
Very similar to seven, sounds super solid. Again, yeah, blades sure. generally do for the most part. If you're catching the middle, they're gonna sound good. Um, but it's doing some, I mean, exactly what you would want in the five iron, it looks like. I think, you know, having hit the, the, the Epon 306s just before these, they definitely don't feel hollow body. We hit some of those with the Adele irons earlier, but they don't also feel as forged, like a one piece forging, like, a, yep. like an Epon. So you do feel a little something in there. But you're not gonna you're not gonna feel it like a true forged iron to me. Like I can feel there's there's a slight difference to the way it's coming. It's not, it's not as deep in sound right. and not as heavy as a, in the strike. It's probably how I'd describe it. I came out hot. Yeah, they're kind of right on that 200, 201. Yeah, and I, I feel mean, like. Peak height wise, like that's generally, you're normally just over 105 with yours, 110 would you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're, it's kind of in close to that window um, with everything that you kind of do with yours for the most part. There's not much in that. Um, kind of doing everything that you would see in a, a blade iron. If I put that would have went in. Yeah, if I had set the flag right, it would have been perfect. I don't know why, it's, it's the, 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 it does that sometimes. Yeah. Kind of that lots category, right? Lots of, lots of control, uh, great feel, kind of matching apex, slightly down in the four, as you'd expect, kind of as I would, uh, sorry, five, as you'd expect and as I'd want. Um, 200 yards is fine for a five iron number for me with a loft like that. I think, the, I mean, the moral story, hard, I think you just can't to. go wrong with a good, good iron. Japanese a well -made Enzo good iron. forged iron. Totally. At the end of the day, I know there's, it's a small market on this side of the world for the most part. Yeah. Most people just go towards the brands that they've heard of and the big brands, but totally. I mean, on that side of the world, most people are using yeah. Yeah. this style of club. You're right, you're absolutely right. And, and that should be people like us, our job to tell their story on, on a platform like this where people are coming in to tune in to learn about equipment that maybe they don't know of or haven't heard of. So, you know, that's, that's why this is so important for us to test yeah. these. And it might be to a smaller audience, fine, but you know, we still have to tell the story. Yeah, absolutely. And I think with the traction being on the LPGA Tour with Lydia Ko and yeah. stuff, you might start seeing um, some kind of pros and the tours that we're more familiar with playing these irons and you never know, it could start seeing more and more people using them. So. Be nice, wouldn't it? Be yeah. nice to see some, even some of the kind of talent coming out of Korea, Japan, you know, anywhere kind of over there, you know, starting to kind of play these throughout their, their amateur years and taking them on to their rookie years on tour and, and sticking yeah. with them because they work. Yeah, and I, I mean, as I said, you can't go wrong with the look of them. They're just like no. a very clean looking club yeah. that um, obviously performs well as well. So if you're Love out there them. and you get a chance to maybe try some of these brands that we don't hear as much about this side of the world, then uh, I'd definitely suggest it because they do perform well, they do feel good. Um, and I think there is a market for them. So yeah. hopefully you enjoyed this video and we'll see you again soon.